All right, now I'm going to, as promised, show you a third solution. And I said right at the beginning that this solution is weird. You're gonna say, whoa, this is so strange and long. Like, it's not an efficient process. It's actually quite time consuming. However, what is attractive about it is that uh, it doesn't require similar triangles. It doesn't require um, uh, any coordinate geometry at all. In fact, all it really requires is a bit of construction and a bit of counting, uh, which you might think like, how do you do this problem just by counting, like there's fractions involved and all that kind of thing. Well, we'll reveal that in a moment. Just before I show you the kind of path that I'm gonna take through the question, I just wanna acknowledge Andrew Keepit, um, who showed me this solution. I thought, oh, that's so clever. It's, it's a really creative way of looking at this problem. The way that I would um, compare it to, even though it's inefficient, so you might say, why bother learning it, right? What I would compare it to is, you know, I, I actually like bike riding. Um, I enjoy bike riding so much that last year I broke my collarbone coming off my, my bike. Um, so I'm still bike riding because I enjoy it. Now, one of the things I like when I'm bike riding is in my local area, working out a really interesting path to get from A to B. Um, you know, it's like, oh, okay, I want to get to that, um, you know, playground over there because then my kids can have a good time there and they can relax and then we will come back home, right? So I want to work out what is a clever way to get from my house to that playground. And there are going to be like hundreds of different paths that I can take. Some of them um, are going to allow me to avoid, you know, nasty looking hills, which is handy because I'm riding with my kids. Um, other ways might be a bit more scenic. Maybe they're a bit more um, shady and that kind of thing, or maybe they might take me through some beautiful bushland um, that's very attractive. It might be the long path, but it's just nice to go through a spot like that because I live in an area with a lot of um, nature and what have you. Or, <laughs> this sounds like a joke, right, but it's not. At the, at the right or the wrong time uh, in Australia, if you are riding your bike around spring, uh, there's a lot of uh, baby birds that are being protected by their parents in their nests. And so the birds, particularly magpies, are the funny ones. They're the black and white birds if uh, you're overseas and you've never heard of these before. Uh, they can be quite aggressive. And so what they will do is they will swoop at you as you're riding by. Um, and they'll actually, like some of them are pretty aggressive and they'll, they can like draw blood with their talons and, 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 and hurt you quite badly. Um, and even if they don't hurt you, it's still kind of creepy, especially for the kids, right? So I guess I'm highlighting this to say, maybe what I want to do is get away from my home to the playground that will avoid all of the, the magpie nests, right? Because I actually can work out where they are and there are even some warning signs, right? So therefore, what I'm gonna employ is all of my logic and all my ability to read a map and my experience of the area to try and map out a nice way from A to B. Now that's often gonna be a longer way or a more scenic path. It's not gonna be the most efficient. If you wanna take the most efficient path, you just get in a car and you drive, right? That's gonna be the fastest for sure. But sometimes you wanna go somewhere using your bike rather than taking a car. So what I'm gonna show you now is a solution that, well, if you can drive and you know how to drive, then obviously you would do that. But there's a different kind of attractiveness to taking a bike uh, path to do that. And that's what is the method that I'm going to show you. Um, it's kind of a bit of a biking way of doing it. So let me take this diagram. This is going to be our starting point and I'm going to pop it here. Let's chuck it on the left hand side. And I'm going to call this method three just so that I, I don't spoil it entirely. Um, I'm going to call method three counting because that is actually what we're going to be doing. But it's kind of fancy counting as you're going to see. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of all of this information here. And one of the attractive things, by the way, um, about this solution that I'm about to show you is it doesn't even really um, require the measurements that I've got here, at least not to do any calculations with them, um, or maybe a, a few small calculations, but not the kind of calculations you've just been seeing, right? So I think by now we know this problem well enough. You know that this AB is a half, BC is also a half, this is three quarters, this is one quarter, this is one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this diagram. Actually, what I might do is I might, wrong wrong tool. Let me just duplicate it over here because I'm going to need to do this a couple of different times. And what I want you to notice is um, all of the previous methods that we use relied on the fact that we've got triangles here and we can manipulate those, right? Um, what I'm going to do here is rather than look at the fact that there are triangles, I can say, look, there's a big square. This blue shape in the middle has been punched out, um, you can see, from these other two weird shapes on the side. Um, a, B, G, E, F, so it's a pentagon, uh, a weird pentagon. And then I've also got B, C, D, E, H, another weird pentagon over there, right? So what I'm gonna do is think about the whole square, which I know has an area of one, 
And then I want to think about these two weird pentagons. Again, I guess you could think about it as I'm still using subtraction, uh, but it's a different, I'm subtracting different shapes. So I'm thinking about different composite figures here. So if I were trying to think about, let's, uh, let's get rid of this focus here. If I were trying to think about this weird pentagon over here on the left, so what do we call that? A, B, uh, G, E, F. So if I were to try and work out what's happening here, right? One of the ways that I could approach this, and this you're gonna say like this is so strange and counterintuitive, is I can just think of it in terms of the lines that make it up. In this case, as we're looking at in the coordinate geometry version, A, E, and then B, F. Those two lines define for me what kind of shape I get out of this weirdo looking pentagon, right? So I'm actually going to temporarily get rid of all the rest of this information. I'm just gonna focus on this green shape here. Excuse me. All right, now, uh, oh, what I wanted, uh, that's not meant to be a highlighter. How do I change that? How do I fiddle with that? I want it to be a pencil. Mm, oh well, I'll just use this one. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the, um, the, the lines that I've got here, um, A, E, and B, F, to uh, create a pattern across this square that allows me to evaluate the green pentagon still feels weird calling it a pentagon, but it's got five vertices and five edges. Uh, I'm gonna evaluate the area of this weirdo looking pentagon. I don't even have an area formula for a pentagon, but I don't need one if I can work out what proportion the green pentagon is of the total square. How am I gonna do that? Well, watch this. It's weird, but just stay with me, okay? I'm gonna divide up this, um, this shape, uh, this big square, um, using lines that are parallel to um, the uh, the AE over here. So I need one more. It's gonna look like, uh, let's see here, I guess. I'm, oh, that's, that's terrible. Um, that's actually gonna go all the way down there. There we go. All right, so what I've got is, I've got four lines here that are all parallel to A, well, three lines, three additional lines that are all parallel to AE. And then I'm going to rehearse that, um, that process um, to get um, lines that are parallel to B, F. So let's see here, that's looking at that slant, it's gonna go across like so. This one's gonna go across like so. Um, oh, I missed that spot, let's try that again. That's better. Uh, if I go up from the bottom, it does that, and I need one over this side for completeness. Okay, so what have I got here? All right, this immediately looks weird and strange and confusing, right? But I hope what you can see here is I've divided the square um, a, C, D, F into a bunch of parallelogram style units, okay? Or you could think of them as tiles because there's a tessellation going on here, okay? Now, uh, because of the way it's tiled and the fact that the square goes right over the top of them, some of the tiles, I guess they're, they're parallelogram tiles, some of the tiles are complete and other ones are, are cut off by the edges of the square, right? So my question is, how many um, tiles are, are, the, are made up of the entire square? And then how many tiles does the, uh, the green pentagon take up in proportion to the whole square? Okay, so stay with me and you might be able to see this logic sort of unfold, right? What I've got here is, um, and by the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this and for reasons are gonna become clear in a second, I'm gonna um, grab another one and put it over here for comparison. I think I've still got space, yep. So what I'm gonna do in the first instance is I'm gonna work out, uh, I don't even need G there in the middle. In fact, I don't need any of this around the edges. So let's, no, no coordinate or, or labeling of um, side arguments like deduction required. I just can, just can count, which is what's attractive about this process. Let's look at the left-hand side and work out how many complete tiles it takes to fill up this square, okay? So the first complete tile I see is here, one. Okay, so let me highlight that as kind of our unit, right? I've got this shape here, this, is one complete tile. How many of these make up the square? Well, there are some that are easier to see and some that are harder. So I see a second one here, third, fourth, fifth, and then sixth. And if I'm not mistaken, all the rest of them are cut off by the edges, right? But if you look closely, you'll see, for example, if you divide this first one up in half, right? You can see you've got a half up here and it corresponds to this half down here. It's a tiling, right? It's a tessellation, it just goes off forever, right? So what I can say is I'm up to six at the moment. So this is half of, the seventh one, and this is the other half of the seventh tile, the seventh parallelogram, right? And I can keep this process going. Here's the top of one and the bottom of that same one. Here's a ninth one. 
here is a tenth one, and then what have I got here on the other sides, right? Well, there's a couple of different ways to think about this. If you have a look, See, see this um, this triangle over here. It's it's a slice of a tile that actually comes from the other side of the square. Can you see if I actually um, take this here? If I draw it like so, I might be able to just pick it up. Let's see if I'm accurate enough. Can I grab it? Yes. Okay. If I put it over here. Can you see what I've created over here? This is one whole tile, just like tile number one, right? So this, um, if I combine them, you can see they, they make one complete whole. So really what I've got is, what am I up to? I'm up to, um, wrong color. I'm up to 10 at the moment. So this is the, a part of the 11th one, and this is the other part. They're obviously not halves. 11B is much bigger than 11A. And I can use the same logic to say, hey, this is one part of the 12th, and here's the other part, 12, B. Okay, so you see my logic here. I've now accounted for every tile on this square. The whole area is one, but 12 tiles, equal tiles, make up this, this entire square. So each one of these tiles, without any sort of formula or calculation, each one must have an area of 1 12th, right? So green tiles here, oops, green tiles are equal to 1 over 12 um, of a square centimeter, I guess, in this case, right? Now, what I need to know is how many tiles make up this weirdo pentagon, right? And we can do the same process. I'm just gonna be counting, right? Same deal, I'm gonna do the whole tiles first, and then I'm gonna do the part tiles after, right? So this is the only whole tile that I can see in the green pentagon. Um, I can see this is the first half of one tile, the second tile, um, and then uh, I'm looking at this one. There's no corresponding bottom part to that, so I'll leave that for a moment. But then you can see these two parts here, I'm using the same argument that I did over here for this 11th one. You can imagine sort of rotating this around and it would end up creating a whole, let me just do it very messily here, it would create a whole tile there. Wow, that's really badly drawn, but you get the idea, okay? Uh, actually, that, that's bothering me so much. I'll try and um, sort of do it a bit more accurately. So there you go. So that, that should go the same amount of that, but you get the idea, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, um, what am I talking about? This is, this is the first tile. This together makes the second tile. Here comes a third tile. Here's 3A, I'll call this 3B. And then this one here, it's just kind of a loose end. So it's half of, I guess, the fourth tile. Fourth tile. So what have I got here? Well, my pentagon, my green pentagon, green pentagon, how many tiles is it? It's three and a half of those tiles, right? I've got one whole one there, two whole ones, three whole ones, and then there's three and a half, right? So it's three and a half times one twelfth. Right, so three and a half over 12, um, I can say, well, that's uh, multiplied top and bottom by two, so that's gonna be seven over 24. And by the way, that 24 should look familiar. I'm gonna come back to it momentarily. So what have I just done? I've worked out this left-hand part here, which I can subtract later, without any formulas, without any similar triangles or coordinates. All I've done is I've created this tiling and then counted the appropriate number of tiles. And that's given me this area over here. Now, uh, just, I mean, you're starting to get sick of it, right? I'm gonna rehearse this logic, but I'm gonna do it for the right-hand side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, all right, I don't need this or any of this anymore. All I need to work out is what's going on with this side of the um, diagram here, this pentagon that I'm creating very messily on this side. Ta-da. So um, in much, much the same way as I did before, I'm going to, ooh, let's move this out of the way so I have space. Maybe I'll just move this down so that I can draw on it. Uh, before I work out what this purple pentagon is, what I have to do is work out the tiling, right? So I should have gotten rid of those, shouldn't I? So I'm gonna do the tiling using this side over here, and uh, I'm gonna do the same process of parallel lines, right? So I'm gonna go, um, looks to me like I'm gonna need a parallel line here. Parallel line here, it's a bit messy, but you get the idea. There's one more over there, and I'll need one more matching here. And then for this other one, the gradient's four over three, which is slightly awkward, but that's okay. We can make it work. Uh, let's try and go, well, I'm just, just gonna do a straight line there. Um, that's cheating slightly, but you get the idea. So this straight line, where's it gonna go? So it's gonna collide about there. This, I need more space to wait this one out. So this straight line should finish here. 
straight line. So I can see it's going to collide about there. Uh, let's go do in the other direction. So a straight line should go to there. Straight line should go to there. Okay, fantastic. All right, so have I got this right? I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, there are more tiles that you can see here, but I'm gonna go through the same process and do some counting, right? So one, uh, that's my first, com my first complete tile there, right there. So I'm gonna use this as my, uh, what I'm gonna count for the rest of it. There's a whole one there, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and you've got to be careful, right? This one here looks like it's a 13, but it's been cut off on the edge there. All right, let's take great care and work out how many other tiles I can complete using the pieces, right? So I'm up to 12 at the moment. So I'm gonna go 13A and 13B just here. 14, 15 up here. I'm up to 16. Now I've got these awkward um, edge pieces to deal with. So when I look carefully, um, it looks like what I'm gonna get is, um, and I'll go, I actually can, I'll use the left and right like I did um, earlier because I think that makes the pattern a bit more obvious. Um, here is the 17th one. So from the left, I then go over to the right. So this is 17B. This one will be number 18. And then you've got this tiny sliver over here which is also 18. Um, over here, I'm up to 19. And then this big one here corresponds. And then this would be 20. And it's our last one. So this would be 20. B, all right, so now I know 20 complete tiles, or sorry, 20 tiles to complete the square. So therefore each of the tiles is one over 20. So I'll write that down. Purple tile equals one over 20. And now I need to know how many tiles in this purple Pentagon. So actually, um, yeah, I should have actually, um, how did I do that before? I did the, I know, I did the, I forgot to delete the, or copy it before I did the counting, but anyway, that's all right. Actually, you know what? Maybe we can, uh, let me see if I can be a little cheeky and use um, this over here. Duplicate, so let's count it a slightly different way. All right, so. I'm gonna do some circling here. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. So these are complete. Um, you can see, uh, so I'm up to five complete. Then I can match up um, these A's up here with that B. So that's uh, another complete one. This is two that I've made out of there. So there, uh, tops and bottoms. There's no more, there's not a top and bottom to go with this one. So I'm just gonna leave that. So I'm gonna go two um, up down ones. Um, then you can see, let's have a look here. Um, in the same way that you can see this 17B, what it wants to pair with is one of these looking shapes, which you can see down the bottom here, right? So I'm gonna pair up this 17B with this 20B. Um, and then you can see in the same way, I've got this, these two pairing together. This is a really big one and this is like a tiny sliver. So I've got another two that are these um, left right versions. And then what that leaves me with is the thing that I've labeled here as 16B, so it's half, right? So therefore it's gonna be a half, a half tile, right? So what have I got here? Five plus two plus two plus a half, that's gonna be nine and a half. So therefore I can say purple pentagon is equal to nine and a half. Make sure I get that right. Um, times one over 20. Um, doing a similar process before so I can get rid of the halves. That's going to be 19 over 40. And that 40 should also look familiar. Let's go all the way back to the top up here. Can you see um, this, I sort of flagged this before, this over 24 and this over 40 came from doing these denominators, right? When we were working out the area. Well, we haven't gone anywhere near uh, and an area formula for a triangle, but the same 24 and the same 40 have emerged because essentially what you're working out is how many of those tiles will fit into the hole, right? So now I can say, all right, I'm ready to go. Um, I'm just gonna um, say blue area 
equals, the whole square is one. What I'm gonna then take away is the green and the purple pentagons in this case. So that's gonna be seven over 24. Take away 19 over 40. And I'm just gonna quickly um, highlight the fact that if I go back to the original solution that I showed you back up here, what I love is how parallel, but how um, slightly different they are, right? Because you still got 20 fourths when you're dealing with that left-hand side of the diagram because of the proportions. You still got 40 ths when you're dealing with the right-hand side because of the proportions you get there from the original diagram, like so. But because you're starting with a different shape, this is the square versus the triangle, uh, BDF, um, therefore you're working out different things. However, delightfully, go ahead and check that out in a, tr in a, in a calculator if you really want to be satisfied. And that is still going to equal seven over 30 and those were square centimeters as we determined before. So I know that was a weird solution, um, but it is delightful for me that we can use, like take a whole different perspective on the problem and still, as so often happens in mathematics, arrive at this one solution so we can have great confidence that whichever path we took, we know that we were accurate. So I hope you enjoyed those methods. Like I said, um, I would, if, I, if I got presented with this problem, well, this problem, I would definitely instinctively always go for this first method of solution. Um, I guess the more sophisticated knowledge you can take advantage of, and similar triangles, they, they actually mask a lot of um, great geometric reasoning just in um, the properties that we have learned about every single shape, like similar triangles or like properties of a, of a quadrilateral and that kind of thing. They enable your calculations to be more straightforward. And so that's why you can see here, I had to pull out some equations here. I had to know how to solve simultaneously, which I didn't really have to do at all here in the first solution. So it uses, I would say, kind of the most um, sophisticated tools, which is why you didn't have to work very hard with them. The equations are all pretty straightforward. And as you go um, further back, you know, as I go to more and more quote unquote basic techniques, and I said, oh cool, no formulas, but whoa, that was laborious, right? Especially this last one, even just working out how many tiles there were was a weird kind of problem to solve. Um, it is still, elegant in its own way because it doesn't require any advanced techniques, just some patience and a bit of construction.